In today's fast-paced business world, staying ahead means having instant access to critical data. But the challenge is gathering all of that vital data into one easily referenceable place. What we want is the ability to have a user interface connected to external databases, making sure the latest data is always at our fingertips. We want a supply chain dashboard that's providing us with real-time insights into the metrics that matter for our business, whether or not that's stock management, costs, or procurement. We want to streamline data extraction and analysis, enhance efficiency and accuracy, and have the most useful data at our fingertips. Hi, I'm Kevin from BuddyBase. And in this video, I want to show you how BuddyBase enhances teams productivity allowing them to craft custom dashboards that leverage their data wherever it is. This is what we'll be building. A supply chain dashboard has some cards that are telling us our average spend, our total spend, the number of orders we have. We'll have four charts, one telling us our cost by category, another our costs by vendor. We'll see how our stock levels are doing by item, and we'll see our cumulative daily spend. Your business will have other metrics that you'll want to keep track of but the thinking and processes that we cover in this video will get you up and running in no time. Let's dive in. If you haven't already, you can sign up for a free BuddyBase account at BuddyBase.com or you can self-host your own instance of BuddyBase on whatever platform you'd like. Once you've set up and logged in, you'll land on this portal where we can manage all of the applications we have and create a new one. I'm gonna create a new one and on this screen, I'm able to create an app from one of the templates that we have already, to import an app from some other source, or to start from scratch. I'll start from scratch. I'll call this my supply chain dashboard. With BuddyBase, we want to help you turn your data into action. So the first thing we're always gonna ask you is, where is your data? And your data might be accessed through a collection of REST API endpoints, a relational database, a non-relational database, or even a spreadsheet product like Airtable or Google Sheets. If you don't have data of your own, you can use our internal data source to be able to create tables as you build your application. For me, my data is in a Postgres database, so I'll click on Postgres and I'll add my connection details. Once my details are in, I'll activate SSL and click Connect. I then get all of the tables that are currently on my database. I certainly don't want them all. We want our inventory and our vendors, our returns, our consignments, and our shipments, and we'll also want our sales. Once fetched, on the left-hand side, I can see each of the tables. As I click into them, I can see the data as it exists in the database right now. Our inventory stores the current state of our stock levels for various items, including the quantity, the price, and the vendor ID. The purchase order stores the cost, the issue date, the complete date and the PO number of our purchase orders from vendors. Sales contains the item name, the quantity, the date, the ID and the inventory ID. Shipments has the purchase date, the arrived date, the shipment number, the vendor ID and the purchase store ID. And vendors stores the full details of each of our vendors, including their unique ID, the category and other relevant information. With our data imported, we can start to build our UI. So we'll go to the design tab and we'll click on blank screen. I'm gonna leave that as the blank route and press continue. I then get an opportunity to choose my role-based access level. By default, that's basic, which means we're expecting our users to log in. At public, anyone can use this application. Power and admin are both elevated roles. But for slightly sensitive information like our sales, we probably want it to be behind a login. So I'll press done, and that'll generate a blank screen. On the screen, we'll add a headline, and we'll have it tell us what this month is. So we'll just say, this month, and then I can use curly brackets to access the date helper. The data helper, I want to say the date for now, and then I can pass a format string. Specifically, I want to say month, month, slash, year, 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 four Ys. So this month, 11, 2023. Below our headline, we're going to display that row of summary cards. So we'll add a container. We'll call it our card container and we'll set its direction to horizontal. And inside of this container, we'll add a cards block. 
We'll call the first card the average purchase order spend. A card block takes a data source and then iterates over every row in this data source. So at the moment, we've got a card for every item in our inventory. It's limited to eight. We could paginate or increase the limit if we wanted to see more. But we want a card that's going to give us the average purchase order. And we also want two other bits of information. We want the total purchase order spend and the number of purchase orders that are in right to this month. So to help us with that, we're going to create a custom query. So go back to our data tab, click on PostgreSQL, queries, and create new query. Now, all of the queries that we'll use during this tutorial will be found in the accompanying blog post. So while I'll type it here and talk through it, you can copy and paste it directly if you're following along. I'll call this my cost stats by month. And my query then will be to select. And I want to select the year from, so I'll extract year from the issue date. I'm going to cast that as an integer and call it year. And then I want to extract the month from the issue date. Again, I want to cast that as an integer and call that month. I want to sum all of the costs and call that total cost. And I want the average of our cost as average cost. And then I want to count how many there are as an integer. I'll call that the PO count. So what table do I want to get that from? I want to get that from the purchase orders table. And because I'm doing a sum and an average, I'm going to group them. I'm going to group them by the year and the month. So that means I'll have a new row for each month in each year. And then just so they're in the right order, I'll order them by the year and the month. So I'll run that query and I'll get the first one back. Year 2023, month nine, total cost, average cost, and PO count. In the scheme, I can see they're all numbers, but I could change it if the data type didn't suit me. And the preview, I can see all of the data I've got access to. So I've got data from September, October, and November of this year. Let's save that query and go back to the front end. And for our card block, let's change it to be cost stats by month. Now at the moment, we've got three cards here. And that's because we had data for three months. In fact, we only want the data for one month, this month. So I'm gonna hit no filter set and add some filters. I want a year to equal a binding of this year. So I can use the lightning bolt if I'd like more space. I can do double curly brace and date now. And the year is year, 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 year. Now the autocomplete happens in here, but if I want to, I can just do it in lines for the month. I know what I'm, if I remember what to do, I can just type it in here. I don't get the autocomplete, but once you've done it a few times, you don't need it as clearly. So when I save this, this would go from three cards to one card because only one card matches this month and this year. And then I can update the title. The title for this one is going to be the average spent. So I'll do dollar and average cost. I'll do average spend and get rid of the description. Now this is currency. It'd be good to have this to two decimal places. So I can do that with the fixed helper. So two fixed to two decimal places. It's a bit tidier. Awesome. So to save us a bit of work, we'll duplicate that card two times, one and two, and then we'll change the data. So this time, it's going to be the total cost that we care about. So this time, instead of average spend here, we can do total cost and save. And we change the title to be total spend. And lastly, we'll do the number of orders. So in here, PO count, number of orders. And there we go. We've got our cards ready to go. These summary cards are giving us key information about our business as soon as we land on the screen. And it's completely up to date. As soon as the database changes, these cards will change. Below our cards, we want to display two charts. One will be a pie chart, which breaks up our costs in the current month by category. And the other will be a bar chart that does the same thing, but by company. And both of these attributes are stored in our vendors table. So in vendor, for each company, we can see we have a category for the company and we've got the company name. So we're gonna need 
to get that data in a helpful way. So click on Postgres, Queries, Create New Query, and I'll call this Costs by Category. So we're gonna to need to join some tables together to be able to get all the right data. So the two tables we're gonna need are our purchase orders and we'll also need our vendors. We want to join those together. So I want to select v.category, the category from the vendor table. And then we'll want to get the year and month like we've done before. So extract year from purchase order issue date and cast that as an integer and call that year. And then extract month from po.issue date cast out as an integer and call that a month. And then we get the sum of the costs as total costs. So we're gonna get that from the purchase order table, which we'll call PO. And then we want to join on the shipments table, which map between the shipments and the vendors. So we're gonna to need to join the shipments table on and then join the vendors table onto the shipments table. So we get this kind of continuous enrichment of our data. So we'll join shipments which we'll call S on PO.PO .PO number. And then in the shipments table, there's also a purchase order ID. And once that's happened, we'll join our vendors, which we'll call V on S from the shipments table, vendor ID, matching V for the vendors table, V underscore ID. And then because we've done a sum, we want to group. So we'll group by category, V dot category, year and months. And just for tidiness, we'll order them by the same thing. So V dot category, year and months. So if we run that query, we'll get our first result back. So biotech 2023, month 10, and the cost 2942. We look at our schema, text, and numbers. We look at the preview, this is all the data that we have. You can see that there's some data for 10, 11, 9, 10, 11, 10, 9, 10. So for lots of different months here. So we go to back to our design tab, saving what we've done. We'll add a container, on, which is going to contain our two charts. So this is going to be our category pie chart. So let's make it a pie chart. The data we want to listen to is our costs by category. Our label we want to be category and our data, we want to be total cost. All right, so we'll go to styles, edit custom CSS, we'll set the width to 50% and save that. And lastly, this is the data for all the months we have. We want that just to be the current month, so we'll add the same filters. So we'll say year equals binding, double curly braces, date now, year, 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 and month, equals binding, double curly braces, date now, month, month, and save. So now we can see there's two categories. We can sort of, that's 8,473 and 900, 845, which is gonna add up to our total spend there. So that makes a lot of sense. Beside this, we want a bar chart that's going to display the similar data, but broken down by company name rather than category. So we'll need another custom query for that. Go to our data. Queries, create new query. This is going to be costs by company name. And this is very similar, so just copy and paste it in. You can see we're getting the company name. Everything else is the same, but we're grouping by company name and we're ordering by company name. So we run that. There we go. We'll save that. Go back to our design tab. We'll duplicate this chart so that the filters don't need to be done a second time. We'll change it from being a pie chart to a bar chart. We'll change the query to be by company name, the label to be company name, and the data to be total cost. Let's make it be horizontal, and then make this container be horizontal too. And there we go. We should give them both descriptive titles so we can see what's going on. So this is costs by category, and this is costs by company name. We'll create two more charts beneath these. And to save ourselves um, configuring those filters again, we'll just duplicate our container. And now we need to go update those queries. So data, we'll create a new query. There's gonna be a bar chart displaying the net stock change by item for the current month. So we make a sale, our stock decreases. When the sale is returned or we receive a new consignment of an item, 
their stock's going to increase. So we'll call this cumulative change by item by month. And this is a long query, so I'll copy it in and I'll talk through it. We start off with a custom table expression. We're creating this table called all stock changes. We're working that out by um, selecting the item name, the month from the arrival date as month year, the quantity of stock change from the consignments. We're joining on to that the ID and the number, and we're grouping that by the item name and the month name. We're calling a union on everything, and we're selecting the, the same thing except the minus the quantity from the sales. So we've got positive from our consignments, negative from our sales. We've got positive from our consignments because that's stock coming in. We've got negative from our sales because that's stock going out. And we've got positive from our returns because that's coming back again. So the union will combine all of that to give us a final sum for stock change. So then we can get the item name, the year, the month, and the total stock change. We'll group it by item name, by year, and month. We can track that over each name. So let's run that. We see a bulldozer, total stock change was 110. We can see that for each month. We can see sometimes it went down a lot, sometimes it went up a lot, and that sort of balance out. Let's save it. Go back to our design tab and go to our third chart. So our third chart is going to be our cumulative stock change. It's going to be a bar chart. Its data is going to be our cumulative change. Its label will be our item name and its data will be our total stock change. Over time, that's looking good. And again, that's been filtered for this month and this year. Awesome. So one more chart that we're going to do is going to be the cumulative daily spending. So how much money has been spent each day. So we'll add a last query and we'll call this the cumulative spend this month. And we'll paste in our query. So again, we've got the CTE, this um, common table expression, which is generating a row for each day of the month. We're doing that because we want to have a value even if there were no sales or spend. We want to have a value for each day of the month. We'll then get the year, the month, the day, and we'll coalesce over the um, running daily cumulative costs. So we'll manage to add all of those things up and work that out. So if we run that query, we can see we're getting the right data. We're getting one for each day of the month up to where we're at now. So when we go to our design tab, we can save that. Our final chart, we'll make a line chart with our cumulative spend this month. Our label is going to be the day and our data column is going to be the running cost. Okay. Let's update our titles. This is our cumulative stock change and this is our cumulative spend. With that done, we have a live dashboard that's giving us key information about our company's health. We can see what we're spending, we can see where it's being spent, and we can see how stock is changing over time. Your business will have different metrics it wants to keep track of, but you, for each of them, you'll want to create a query that's going to gather that data and then a visualization for that data or a textual representation of it. Then, once that's been saved, every time you refresh this page, it's going to get the data from the database and give the most up-to-date information based on that same query. Your charts are not static, they're dynamic and live, and they can be shared with your users to help them make better business decisions today. I hope you find this useful. Comment below to let us know what you think we should be building next. Otherwise, we'll see you here soon. Thanks. Bye.